Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Advanced Java Concepts. In this episode, we're going to learn about bitwise operators. Before you watch this video, make sure that you watch my video explaining binary and converting decimal to binary and back and forth. And then also check out the video on bit shifting because that will be helpful here. So a bitwise operator is an operator something that performs an operation, uh, but on the bits of a number. So when you think of a num uh, an operator like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, you're performing the operation on the number itself. When you do 2 plus 2, you're taking the number 2 and you're adding 2 to it. When you're talking about a bitwise operator, instead of acting on the numbers, it goes down to the bits that the numbers make up. So it converts the number essentially into binary, and it deals with the binary version of the number instead of the regular decimal version of the number. This is useful for various different things, not so much in Java, but it's really important to know, especially for other languages like C, um, where this is used a lot for flags and um, all kinds of different interesting things. If you're going to call yourself a programmer, then you should definitely know how bitwise operators work. So before we actually get to the bitwise operators, we need to establish a truth table. A truth table is just going to present us with a bunch of conditions, and then we're going to decide based on those conditions um, whether a value would be true or false. So we're going to make this table as a comment, and I'm not going to draw in all of the lines, but I'm going to use tabs so it'll look decent. So, um, at the top, we're going to have our columns. So, let's, so we're going to have two numbers, we'll call them P and Q, or two Boolean values, we'll call them P and Q, and they're either going to be true or false. And these bitwise operators work a lot like Boolean operators. So, we're going to see that. So we have two numbers, P and Q, and then there's a couple of things that we want to look at. We want to look at P and Q. I'm going to write it with one and sign. Actually, I don't want to confuse it, so we're going to use two. So we're going to use, so we have P and Q, P or Q, and then there's also P Zor Q, and that's sort of weird. It's, I guess I would do it like that. And the caret up there is not for exponentiation, it means ZOR, X-O-R, which is the exclusive OR. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. And then over here, um, well, actually, we don't have anything over there. This is just a table going down. So we're going to think of different values for P and Q, and then we're going to compute what is P and Q, what is P or Q, and then what is P ZOR Q. So uh, think for a second, how many entries would be in this table? The correct answer is 4. You could have true, 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 false, false, true, or false, false. There are only 4 entries that you're going to possibly see in this table. Now, if you introduce a third variable, then there are obviously going to be more uh, entries on the table, but there's no need for us to do that. So let's start out, and let's say that P is true and Q is true. Well, let's think about P and Q. The way that an AND works is that both values must be true in order for the result to be true. So in this case, both of them are true, so P and Q is true. Let's think about P or Q. In this case, only one, either P or Q, must be true, and since they both are, the value will be true. Now we get to P Zor Q, and the exclusive OR means that only one of them may be true. So if you have, tr if you have two falses, then that's obviously false. But if you have two trues, then it's also going to be false. The exclusive or says that it must be an or case. It can't be an and. This is useful in certain situations, although not many. So P and Q is true, because both of them are true. But P Zor Q is not true, because P and Q are both true. And the exclusive or says that only one of them may be true, and one of them must be false. So that answer is false. Let's go through all the rest of them. Let's say that P is true and Q is false. Well, P and Q is going to be false because both values need to be true in order for this to work. And I'd encourage you to pause the video and think about uh, all of the answers just to make sure you understand everything. 
P or Q is going to be true because one value needs to be true and one is. And P or Q is also going to be true simply because one value is true, one value is false. And that's how it works. Now if we swap them and we make P false and Q true, well the AND is still going to be false because there is a false value there. The OR is still going to be true because there's a true value and the ZOR is still going to be true because there's one true and one false. Now we get to the fourth entry on the table where both of them are false. Well P and Q is obviously going to be false because there are no true values at all. P or Q will be false, again for the same reason, there's no true value, so two false values are false, and the ZOR is also going to be false because Zor says that one must be true and one must be false. They can't both be false. So we can kind of see here that the AND is only true when both P and Q are true. The P or Q is true so long as one of P or Q is true, and the P Zor Q is only true when we see one true value and one false value. Make sure that the logic that that uh, table there makes sense to you the truth table because now we're going to get into bitwise operators. There are three bitwise operators that we need to think of. The first one is the logical AND. It's represented by a single ampersand. If you're writing an if statement, you would have two ampersands, um, you know, like if condition one and condition two. In this case, we're using a single ampersand. So the AND is called the logical AND. We have the OR, which is the logical OR, and then we have the ZOR, which is the logical ZOR, X-O-R. And now we're going to take a look at each of them. First, let's convert a couple of numbers into binary so that we can take a look at this. Um, let's just convert a couple of numbers. So first of all, the number 1 will be 0001. You know, the zeros are optional. You could just say 1. The number 2 would be 0010 zero, zero, because this is the 1's place. So in this case, there's 1, 1. And in this case, there's 1, 2. Make sure you know how to convert between binary and decimal and back and forth because that's important here. The number 5 would be 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. We have 1, 4 and 1... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. So we have 1, 4 and 1, 1, which add to be 5. And then finally we'll convert, let's just say the number, uh, not 13, that's a bad number. Let's just say the number 8. The number 8 would be, um, well, that would just be 1, 0, 0, 0 because it's 1, 8. And I guess let's just throw in the number 7 there so we have a good mix of 1s and zeros. And the number 7 would be 0, 1, 1, 1 because that's 1, 4 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 1 and that makes... 4, 5, 6, 7. So those are a couple of numbers that we're going to use. Now when we deal with the logical ands, or and zors, they'll work exactly like this table up here. So let's try one uh, first of all. So we're going to do one, um, let's start off with the numbers 1 and 2. So we'll do 1 and 2. The AND, again, is the logical AND, or the bitwise AND, which means that it operates on the bits of the number instead of the numbers themselves. When I hit run, what do you think the result's going to be? Take a second to think about it. And I'm going to go ahead and hit run here, and we'll see that the answer is 0. So let's think about it. Remember this table that we have up here. And also remember that binary, since it's all 1s and zeros, we say that the zeros are false and the 1s are true. So... Uh, we can take a look here. Let's just copy both of these down and we can kind of set it up like that, almost as if it's a math equation. And we can say that when we go through these, 0 and 0 is 0. That's like saying false and false is false. False and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. So we end up with 0, 0, 0, 0, which is equal to 0. And this makes perfect sense to us. Let's try a number like, let's just try another uh, logical AND. And we're going to do it between the numbers 5 and 7. Let's hit run. And you'll see that the answer that we get is 5, which makes sense again. We're going to use this exact same format here. But we're going to say that the number 5, which we translated, is 0101. And then the number 7 is 0111. 
Well, we go through here and we say, first of all, 0 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. 0 and 1 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. So we end up with the number 0, 1, 0, 1, which we know from our table is equal to 5. So that's why it gives us the answer of 5. Note that when you do the logical and, it's not always going to be the lowest number. We saw here that 1 and 2 is 0. Um, 5 and 7 is 5, but it's not always going to function sort of like this, as we saw. So that's the logical and. It takes the two bits at each place and it ends them together where ones are true and zeros are false. Um, let's move on now to the logical or. Uh, we'll try, we'll use I guess the same two examples because they seem to work pretty well. Let's just try one or two and take a second to think about the answer that you would expect and the answer is three. Let's take a look, break it down, and see why we got three. Note that uh, this code is in the description, so you can download the code with all of the comments and everything in the description. Just keep that in mind. So we'll write down the numbers one, and we're using or, setting this up again like a math equation. And then the number two is written like that, as we know. And now we're going to go through and figure them out. Well, false and false or false is false. False or false is false. False or true is true. True or false is true. So we end up with 0, 0, 1, 1, which is 2 plus 1, which is 3. That explains why we got the number 3 there. Let's just try the, uh, actually we'll try a different example this time. Let's just try 8 or um, 8 or 7. Why not? 8 or 7. And then let's see what result we get out of that. So 8 or 7 is 15. Let's take a look and see why this is. Um, we're going to need... No, we're good. So we're going to first translate 8, which is 1, 0, 0, 0. And we're going to be using the or. And then we're going to translate 7, which is 0, 1, 1, 1. And in this case, we're going to find that, well, true and false is true. False and true is true, false and true is true, false and true is true. And we get 1111, which is 8 plus 4, which is 12, 14, 15, no, I'm sorry. We get, that's 12, 13, 14, 15. So 1111 1, 1, 1 is equal to 15, and that makes sense because the next number is 16, which would be 10000. 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's good. 8 or 7 is 15. So that's the logical or. It requires that you have one uh, of the numbers to be true at least in order to get a one out. So that's how the or works if you want to or two numbers. Now we're going to look at the zor. And that, let's try, we'll start off with our classic example, which is using the numbers one and two. Remember that one, that this is not exponentiation. You're not saying one squared. You're saying one zor two. So Keep that in mind. There are certain languages where you can actually write the power symbol like that, but in this case you can't, so just be careful. So let's just try it out, and we see that 1 zor 2 is 3, which just so happens to be the same thing we got when we said 1 or 2. And we can actually copy this exact equation here because, you know, we're fine. We can see that 0 is zor 0 is 0, and zeros. when you get 0 is zor 1, well, we have 1 false and 1 true, so that becomes true. And you'll see again if we copy this right here and we use 8 exclusive or 7, then we get 15 again because in every single case we get one true and one false. But now we're going to try this example of uh, 5 zor 7. So let me just erase the answer because that's obviously going to be wrong here. So when we run this, what are we going to get? We're going to get the answer 2. So let's see why that happened. Well, first of all, 0, zor 0 is 0. We know that false or false is false. Then 1, zor 1 is going to be 0 because the exclusive or says that they can't both be true. Then false and true, false zor true would be true. And true zor true would be false because they're both true and they can't be in order for this to be true. So we end up with 0, 0, 1, 0, and that 1 right there is equal to 2, and that's why the number 2 shows up in our console down there. 
So that is a look, first of all, at truth tables, which you're going to encounter in any computer science um, or logic class. So that's an important concept in and of itself. Then we have all of the um, logical operators, the bitwise operators that again operate on the bits of a number rather than the numbers themselves. We translated a couple of numbers and then we did a bunch of examples using the logical AND, which requires that both be true in order to return true. The logical OR, which requires that one or both be true in order to be true. And then the logical ZOR, which requires that only one be true, not two and not zero in order for it to be true. So that's a look at bitwise operators, one of the lower level features of a language, uh, but definitely a very important feature if you're going to be a programmer. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.